Yehovah Malak, Olam Olamat, Yehovah Malak, Yami Rakis, Yehovah Gadol, Makarian Theos, Yehovah Adonai, Yehovah Elohim, Kurios Theos Pantacreta, Kurios Theos Pistos, Elda et Yehovah, El Emuna Yehova. Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios, O Pantacreta. Basilios, Basilion, Kai Kurios, Kurion. Yehova Dabar Halal. Elohim Dabar Halal. Yehova Elohim, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura. El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos. Ton Christon isun ton Kurion. Kurion ni Mohagion Pantacreta. Gadol Gadol Gebura. Zon Logan Ogar Tautios. Isus Christos. Desmios Dolas. En Ion Ion. Kurion Kurion Kurion. Hagion Hagion Hagion. Pantacreta Isus Christos, Derek Emunabakar, Mishfat Shaba. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and ignorant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath, in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling venturing ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. The sole purpose of the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, as we read the importance of it, in making each and every believer in the book of Colossians chapter 1 to stand before the presence of Lord God the Father perfect and complete. And in this great and unique dispensation of the church age, wherewith we have been kept alive to make every believer to the spear of his glory completely developed, or in the sense who have reached maturity. And that sense of reaching maturity in First Thessalonians chapter 3, Apostle Paul pens these words, particularly in verse 13. To the end, he says, he may establish your hearts, and that's what you have to look, to make it to become, stand first, or to make you all to become absolutely firm, your hearts unblameable, and where? In the sphere of holiness before God. We look in Isaiah chapter 5, in verse 13, no knowledge they perished. In verse 24, they have despised the word of the Lord. They have rejected the law of the Lord. The same thing we read again in the book of Jeremiah chapter 23. Here we look teaching to us 
that the prophets and the priests they became profane and the meaning of us over here to look what is called to be profane it says the pictographical representation of the word meant to say polluted and how they have polluted they have polluted in the sense where they have become to be called as canapes the prophets as well as the priests they have polluted and in the house of israel he says i find evil and the word evil is nothing but distorted thinking the thinking which is not in accord with the word of god the thinking which is not in accord with the original language of the scriptures that thinking is called distorted thinking and today you are not having your accuracy of the scriptures in your translations the original languages of the word of the lord of god guarantee you the accuracy of the scriptures in hebrew greek and aramaic and the bona fide duty of the pastor teacher is to diligently study the mind of christ in the hebrew greek and aramaic and teach to you the truth so that you could stand firm are memtas the greek word which has been used blameless both inward and outward inside and outside when there is no blame inside there cannot be blame outside that's the point are memtas in the sphere of holiness hagios before god but here he claims in jeremiah 23 the priest and the prophet beginning with the prophet the word who would be the reason to teach to you having a fruit and in that he has the seeds that's what earlier the prophets were used in the old testament for the sense of giving you the completed can of scripture so lord god would foretell but now it is foretelling the new testament prophets and the new testament apostles if ever you consider it has been given for you to preach and teach the word of god accurately if not you cannot call yourselves to be a prophets or evangelists prophets or apostles but we have the work of an evangelism and we have the work of a pastor teacher but besides that whatever a people they are running around today to claim themselves to be prophets or apostles they are really liars to the core they do not understand the scriptures very well so a prophet is the one who has in him as a fruit which has seeds in it and from there on we come to the priest and what is the priest the priest can is nothing but he has in his virility and vigor to make his scribes if he isn't making his scribes joining as disciples and growing up into grammatias then he is not a priest to you is not been sent by the lord as we read in ezekiel 3:11 go he said alack and he comes those who are joined as disciples to make you all to grow up into grammatias that's the very simple logic right from the beginning what the bible teaches to the work of the pastor teachers or in the book of deuteronomy chapter 4 claiming them you go and make disciples in the sense you teach the priest work is to teach lamad which is manthano plus didasco in the greek two words for one hebrew word manthano disciples didasco being learned from the teachers so that in return you can become teachers and make disciples in the world so the principle is very simple in the original languages of the scriptures the prophet has in him the seed the word of god the priest has in his blood to make you disciples he has that vigor and virality to make you the scribes and both of them he claims they became the canapes and what kind of a canapes that is what the word calls to be profane they have become polluted and the word polluted for us is very very simple it meant to say they have distorted thinking their thinking is corrupted since they have become canapes unto you as we use the word canapes tiflos sharuras the same thing over here canapes are the people who have made hawak they have really changed the true word of god into that which we call to be absolutely 
profane. The word of Lord God cannot be profane, but these people in their distorted thinking, they have made the mind of Christ what we call to be the canapes. And the reason what is called to be canape is very simple. The reason is they have ignored to reverse or fear or shake or tremble at the word of my Lord God and do the will of God. So the word canape, this word meant to say wickedness, defiling, pollution, corrupted, and also it meant to say hypocritical to the cause. Or in simple words, they are called to be hypocrites. You know who profaned the word of God? The people who are hypocrites. The people who don't have this bona fide gift as we read in Ephesians 3, 7. He said, for this cause, even the reason why the Gentiles also should take the partakers of the elements of the Lord of a God in the great inheritance of his glory. He says in verse 6, in verse 5, these things have been hidden and kept from the ages past, but now it has been made known to you all. And in verse 7, for this cause, God the Father gave this bona fide gift. And that bona fide gift demands clarity. It demands of you to become absolutely free from any mannerism of defiling nature. So that in simple terms he says, you shall come to serve the Lord of a God without murmuring, without grudging, without having a love of money. You should teach them the truth as it is. Whether they hear or forbear, no matter wherever the chips may fall, you teach them the truth. Do not become canapes. Do not become hypocritical men. Do not become wicked. Do not become polluted. You know, that's why God the Father gives this work to the standards of having to be called as his bona fide gift, wherewith he inculcates his seed. And by that we meant to say his sperma. And every believer has this sperma, says 1 John 3, 9. Every believer has been born in that one womb called to be as brethren, Adolphos. So if we have the sperma of Christ, we cannot become hypocritical men. Neither we can be the people called to be polluting the word of God. But already you are teaching in your pulpits, which is translation, which is almost all having pollution in that by the sense we meant to say that they don't have the real full content of the original languages which has been given in the Hebrew or in the Greek to completely expound to you every thought. For example, metamorphomai and metaschematizowa, these both words in the English require minimum two to three lines of explanation. But therefore you, not having the difference in the New Testament, they give you metamorphomai at one end and metaschematizowa at one end, completely translated as one word English in the English called transform, transform. But metamorphomai is different from metaschematizoans. Metamorphomai is complete transformation right from the inside, right from the beginning. Even inward and outward you have transformed. Metaschematizowa, only outward transformation, referring to Satan in Second Corinthians 11, and as well as many canapes pastors today who are having these flattering titles called to be reverends or XYZ. And this metaschematizowa, they appear only outward good, but inward they are still the same. So he claims both the prophet and the priest the priest who should go and make disciples, or in return who should give the training to the disciples to grow up into grammatia so that now they can carry this burden of making disciples of all the nations. The priests who are not making the Lamad work as told in Deuteronomy as well as in Leviticus for the first instruction to the to the priests, the first, very first instruction to the priest, go and make this teaching. Do you teach? He said to the priest to teach. So, even the priest, even the prophet, Nabi'ims, who have in them the fruit. Do you think today any pastor teacher has in him as a, as a fruit which has seed in it so that when he would expound the fruit and teach, the seeds are been there so that he can give those seeds to be planted in the minds of the disciples so that in return they also can go and do the full-time ministry work wherein every believer is called in the church age to be a witness, though he is not a missionary. 
and he could grow up in that fruit of the word of God and go and teach the mind of Christ to these people. That's what the fruit contains, the seed in it. But the pastor is not having an intention to make disciples in the church. The pastor is not worried, though they claim to be the prophets. And what they have become, the word of the Lord of God is so clear, calling you to be canapes, hypocritical, masks-oriented men. Why can't you walk straight in the word of God? What the word of my Lord God demands, why I am not able to perform it. You don't want to make a congregation to stand unblameable, amem toss, in complete holiness before the presence of God, 1 Thessalonians 3, 11 and 12. In order to make you to become unblameable in the holiness of the sphere of Lord of God's glory, he says this gift has been given unto us to establish you, to stabilize you, to give you that strength. And people are there many today to claim how they could be stabilized. They have in them the old sin nature. That's what we have been given the battle to fight. Kill off the old sin nature and begin to live in the sphere of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, forever. For that cause, Apostle Paul says, I have not yet attained. But the, men, but the teaching he meant spiritual resurrection in this flesh he has already attained. The physical perfection is waiting to get from the heaven. That is the resurrection body. But today for every believer, he has been said even in Matthew chapter 13, for you these things have been given so that you might know, you might learn. And you can have more. Even the prophets, even the righteous men in the past, they longed for this wisdom, but it is not given to them. But for you it has been given so that you can learn and grow up to stand before the presence of the Lord of God, a memtos unblameable inward and outward. You know, today much of the present Christendom has been filled with canapes. Every week they try to call you to assemble in the word of God for what purpose they also do not know. They love to make you all to stand perfect in the sight of their doctrines, in the sight of their church programs, but never they're trying to make you up to stand perfect in the presence of God the Father so that you could be unblameable. What would it be if you would say, we are perfect in the flesh on this earth, but God the Father, the way how he evaluates you in the word of the Lord of our God, and if he finds you not perfect for him, where will you stand tomorrow? At the judgment seat of Christ, would you weep or wail? Because even the people who are righteous, he claims in First Peter 4, even for them to be saved is very great difficult. Then how about the fate of unbelievers if the judgment begins in the church? You know how it is. People always love to look and to have perfection in their outward appearance. But you do not know what disease they are suffering inside. It is to say, people love to spend much of their money to look good, to look beautiful, having the ornaments, having the great silk saris. Even in India, you can find that word about silk. That's the origin from India, serik. So you may think, I may have this, or I may have this great linen clothes, or I will be great in this, uh, in this gold, or in this ivory, or whatever you want. But if you don't have good health, what it will be good to have in you to look your ornaments or your design or your way of your appearance. First, your health should be good. Then no matter whatever you wear, it makes a meaning. If your health is not good and whatever you love to look up or whatever you love to make up in your cosmetic or in your ornaments, you're still inside sickened. That's a simple illustration for canapes people. They haven't taken the word of the Lord of God to be the only healing for them perfectly in the mind of Christ, in the fear of the Lord, paying to him such kind of a trembling, shaking reverence to the word and to do the will of God. And yet these people, they would love to appear outward beautiful for you. 
That's as simple as that, these people that are trying to be for you. Inward, they are sickened. Spiritually, they are sickened. From the top of the head till to the top of the feet, he claims in the book of Isaiah that they are sickened, the noblemen they have famished out because they don't have the word of the Lord of God. And yet they would love to appear to be outside very beautiful. <laughs> You know how to illustrate that in a very simple way. You know, your your hairs are turning gray, depending upon the age. But these people love to cover it up with their hair dye. That's why we look. These are hypocritical. And they would say, why can't we look good? Why can't we look better? It is given by God according to your age. Why can't you accept that? And you'll out appear beautiful outward, but your inward sickness, you're not able to consider that to be number one priority. You're sickened because your thinking is corrupted. And I have found evil in my house, he says. The word evil is distorted thinking. And that's the reason you're not able to drive out. When Caleb drove out the children of Anak, the three children of Anak, in Joshua 15, in verse 14, the word drove, what we find, meant to say, first your thinking and what you are munching in your thinking or what are you feeding your brain to be thought of. And as you tear the food or munch the food and eat the food after chewing it and then you swallow, that's munching process. And afterwards, that goes on to apply to your body, anabolism, catabolism, or metabolism. The good thing will be, will be taken by the body, and the thing which is catabolism will be thrown out. As human excreta, waste, you know that. So where does the first process begin? It begins in the mouth, swallowing, munching, eating, mixing with the saliva juices in your brain, which comes to your mouth. And that tastes good for you and you take it and you eat it. And that which is good for the body, it takes it. And that which is not worth for the body, it throws it out. It just, it just lushes it out. In the same manner, the word drow is nothing but first what are you eating? And that what your head is thinking. To drive your enemy, he says, don't give place to the devil. Ne neither have the work to place to be given to the devil, but rather resist it. He says, resist the devil and the devil will flee from you. The word drawing or to, to capture our enemy first, your thinking has to be renovated as you eat the food. The munching process, the word what you're taking, where does it come from? Does it have the original intents of Hebrew or Greek or Aramaic? Does it have the same mind what the Lord God wills to the Spirit of God to teach to the bona fide gifted pastor teachers whose duty is to study and teach and expound the right mind of Christ? Do you have these things in your mind? If you don't have, dear brethren, you will pay for it. Because you're not going to stand unblameable before God. You will be always blamed because first your inward thinking is corrupted. You haven't conquered your enemy. So your inward thinking is corrupted. Likewise, your outward thinking or your outward appearance also will be absolutely insane. That's why we look many of the people today, why they are sick inside? Because they don't have the word of the Lord of a God in them. If it is the word of the Lord of a God, reigning in their minds, teaching to them and calling them to do the will of God the Father, they wouldn't have been the same sickness because their thinking is corrupted. And from where the thinking has been originated, he says, the thinking which comes from the mind of the prophets and from the teaching of the priests, they themselves are canapes, they themselves have polluted the word of God, they themselves have defiled my word, they themselves are making my word to become a hypocritical mask, so that my children or my flock are not able to get the right word of God. Therefore, the same thing we find again in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, here also we have the same intents of the word of God 
which teaches to us that Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself will have now for him the flock to be fed. He says in verse number 11, particularly in Ezekiel 34, For thus said the Lord God, Behold, I, I will both search my sheep and seek them out, as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep, which are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in a cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people, and gather them from the country, and I'll bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabitant places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture, again the word of God. Upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture. They shall feed upon the mountains of Israel. And he says, I will feed my flock and I will cause them to relax down, said the Lord. God. Who is going to feed? He says, I will feed them. And who are the people? I, the one who comes from the hand of the Lord of a God in doing the will of God the Father. These are the ones what the Bible calls the people I, because until and unless it is God the Father who is going to send them to teach to the right word of God, you will not get the information. Therefore he claims in Jeremiah 3.15, Pray unto God the Father to give you shepherds after his own heart. What is the duty? The duty is to feed you with knowledge and with understanding. With knowledge and with understanding. Malachi 2, he says the same thing. The covenant that he made with them was to give you the right word of God and teach to you the right mind of Christ. It was a covenant of life and it was a covenant of peace. Do you think you can have life and you can have peace without having the right word of Lord God reigning in you? No way, dear brother, and you cannot. Much of the present Christendom is like a sickened body. Outward they appear beautiful, but inward they are having a lot of sicknesses in their flesh. But the solution for all of those sicknesses is very simple. The word of God, the mind of Christ, the voice of the Holy Ghost. Wherewith you fed in the word of Lord God in your soul, that is what your munching process. And that's what will get every thought into captivity for Christ in your head. And when your thinking is not distorted, but your thinking is the word of God, you completely rely upon the mind of Christ. Being taught categorically, isagogically and exegetically. You are going to take decisions learning from the past so that well prepared for the future and in each and everything no matter what as we read from the lesson of philadelphia of revolution chapter 3 you would stick faithful you would stand faithful though you have little strength you will end your faithful till the death and what blessings he has when he has been endured faithful till the death we shall look after this prayer because we came long way of introduction. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of my Christ. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace of Lord to learn the word. Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. So what are the gifts, what are the things which, if they would stay faithful till the end, God the Father would give? We looked at in the church of Philadelphia, written to them in Revolution chapter 3. The words are so beautiful over here because he claims two things. Number one, to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write these things. He said, that which is holy and that which is true. To stand holiness before the Lord of a God unblameable, as we read that in First Thessalonians 3. To make it to stand firm and unblameable in the presence of God the Father. Holiness is nothing but you have to be in the sphere of aletheia, the truth. And if you are not learning or knowing the truth of the word of the Lord of a God, just forget it if ever you would think you are holy. And in comparison to the word of the Lord of a God, just do not be hearers, but rather be doers. If you are just hearers, he says you are deceiving yourselves and you are miscalculating the true spiritual life given for you. 
So, if ever you think you are holy, if you want to be standing in the sphere of holiness to Lord God, in the appearance of God the Father, you have to be truth. In John 17, we read, what, what, for what, John 18, we read, for what cause Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was been born? He says in John 18, that to witness the truth he has been born. In John 17, 4, we read again, the very great importance of the mind of Christ. He said, they have kept thy word, the great prayer to the church. He doesn't say they will keep or they may keep. But in the past tense, he claims they have kept the word. What a great prayer and confidence he knows that Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has on behalf of us. The same thing over here, he that is holy, he that is true. If you are not in the sphere of Aletheia, you cannot call yourselves to be holy. And holiness is the standards of his righteousness and justice being put together when the two cherubims or the Ark of the Covenant, where Lord the God, God the Father would meet you at the mercy seat. What the righteousness of Lord God demands, justice will execute. And both the righteousness and the justice of Lord God the Father being put together is the holiness of my God. And that's what the same thing he claims, as we were reading yesterday in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 12, over the six categories of the instruments, particularly beginning with only one instrument category of fourth one flute in the church age. And then he claims wine, the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost. And then he claims the feast. And these things are very, very important, dear brethren, and he considers to give. Why aren't you considering the great grace of the Lord, the great beauty of the Lord, the great love of the Lord, the great happiness of the Lord, the great prosperity of the Lord? You're always looking upon your happinesses. You're looking upon your prosperity. But when would you consider my plan that I've given for them? And he goes to write, beginning with verse 1 through 7 of Isaiah, about the vineyard, the way they failed. And he says, I will remove the hedge. And we read the word hedge is nothing. But if you're not able to become the disciples of the word of the Lord of a God, you don't have protection in you. If you're not growing up into become the great grammatures of the Lord of a God, you don't have any hedge in you. And yet he comes. The people, what they have done, they have become drunkards. Early morning they arise to go to drink and get the strong drink. And in verse number 12, he, came, he claims many, many things, particularly saying about the harp, the vial, and the tambourine. The harp itself beginning for you to have that you should make grammatures to be your blood. That should be the vigor and virality of your life. That should be the only process wherewith God the Father could lead you. But they have failed in that. They come to the wild ministry. Even the wild ministry which should become for you to become Lamad principles, they have failed in that. And they come to the Tophet ministry. Rather than having a sign of authority of the Lord of a God and speak with authority in their mouth, they became now to give their sons to the Baal gods to be sacrificed or daughters also when they were being put upon that word Tophet. And again, the same thing he begins now with the church age. First thing he calls the flute. He says, make a mark of separation of a great wall and have to become the disciples of the word of the Lord of a God, reside in that sphere. But they also, they failed. Do not think we have failed today. Do not think we don't have in us a wall of suppression to become the disciples of the word of God. You come to the church for the very purpose of having your own life to be fulfilled with the things that you cater to the Lord. But have you ever prayed for the wisdom and to the enlightenment of your spiritual eyes in Christ? You haven't praying for that. You ask for the prayer requests. People, even unbelievers, may laugh. Having such kind of a great Lord of a God for us, who has given all powerful weapons, kratos, power to be manifested in the iskun strength of the Lord of a God, because he has given this dunamis power to us in the standards of exusia authority. And sometimes your silly prayers for the provisions of this life. Maybe even when the unbelievers would know and understand in the later part of their life what a great God we have been given to us, even they may laugh at your prayers. 
Lord, do this. Lord, do that. So when will the great beauty of the Lord of a God in its utmost happiness could be made manifested to you through your life? After you die, those who are dead and been in the right hand of God the Father in the heaven, because faith alone in Christ alone. They know every breath of their life when they are spending in the eternity. We had a lot of work to do while here on this earth. We had a lot of work to witness for Christ on this earth. We had a lot many things to be done on this earth. But we spent our time worthless, useless way. The way how we could look and tell in the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 6. You know how is your life being spent today? In Jeremiah chapter 6 you have these words. He says, particularly beginning with verse number 6, he teaches to us, what is the life of these people over here? And he claims that these are the standards of the lives of these people. He says in verse number 6 and 7, For thus had the Lord of hosts said, Heave you down the trees and cast a mountain against Jerusalem. This is the city to be visited. She is completely oppression in the midst of her and the word completely oppression is nothing but the way her eyesight the way her munching from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun is completely extortion so he says cut down and the word cut down is they haven't been ready to become scribes their head is not thinking to become scribes. The sign of authority do not match to the word of God. So they are not entrusted to become scribes. So he claims to them, cut down the tree. What all the things that I have given to them? Just chop it off. If you don't listen and obey to the voice of the Lord of a God, then God the Father has another way to deal with you, and that's His judgment. And that's what we look over here, to chop you down, to cut you off into pieces. He says, cut the tree. The tree refers back to the long life. The tree refers back to many things, even for medicine. The tree refers back to your shelter. Because of the same tree in Isaiah chapter 44, a woodcutter went along and he made guard with the tree. He made tent, he made food, and he made clothing and shelter with the tree. So tree refers back to many things in the Bible. And the word tree meant to say where you survive. Where it can have a protection for you. As we noted even in the example of Jonah, he did not plant the tree, but yet by morning God the Father sent a worm to kill it off, and he is now angry again, and he says the things pertaining to Lord God are lesson to him. You haven't planted this tree, yet it gave you shade, but now the tree has been dried up, and yet you are angry. Then how much more about the people who do not know the difference between the left and right? Then how much more I will be protecting them rather than the way you thought to destroy them? So he teaches a lesson there, even the same lesson applies today for us as well. That God the Father wants none to perish, but everyone should be saved. And not only to be saved, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory, 1 Timothy 2, 4. And this is the will of God. The same thing over here, the tree. He says, cut off. And this tree is being cut off because this tree has had in it greater exhortation or extortion. The reason why it is having such extortion, he claims in verse number 7, As a fountain casteth out her waters, so this Jerusalem is been casting out of wickedness, violence and spoil is heard in her before me continually in grief and in wounds. Therefore he says, Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem, let my soul depart from thee, lest my soul depart from thee, lest I make thee desolate, a land not inhabited. This is what today the people are in the present Christendom, dear brethren. The word, what he says, that the tree should be cut off and the reasons, because they have casted out wickedness as water. 
So here we begin. The scope of cistern, cistern he calls in the Hebrew. The word scope is also nothing but they have been to be always scribes in their head. Whenever you find a fountain casting out the water, he says you should have the capacity in making disciples, therefore it has the power to cast out the water. The same thing with every believer, you have the power given by God the Father to make disciples because you are like a fountain which casteth out the water like scribes. And scribe is the one who has the information from top to bottom. As an ambassador, we are called to be in the church age, so you will be having the information. And the reason why you have to grow up as scribes is that you have to learn the complete information of God, being taught by the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher in your pulpits, in your church. So he says, as the fountain, the scoop in the Hebrew, kor. Again he says, the word bor, kor, bor, beer. And we find over here, cistern, cistern. Cistern is a combination of having your scribes in your head. And then he says, the waters of her which makes a pleasant place to be. Again, she scoops rather than making scribes in her head. She scoops evil. The word evil is distorted thinking. If you don't have the thinking of a scribe in you, then whatever thinking you have, that's a distorted thinking. If you don't have the maturity of a thinking of a scribe in you, that's why Matthew 13, 52, joining as disciples and growing up into grammatias is what the church is all about. If you're not joining as disciples and growing up into grammatias, you're having a thinking, you're having a scoop, you're having a fountain, and that fountain or a scoop or a thinking is distorted. It will not match to the thinking of Christ. Therefore, many will perish because they don't have the knowledge of God. And the one of my duty of the pastor teachers given to them is the work not to be found canapes, not to defile the word of God, not to adulterate the word of God, not to pollute the word of God. And that's what you and I should learn. If not, you are becoming a hypocrite. You have to face the truth as it is. You have to know your body is having sickness. You have to know it. We are just covering it with your outward appearance doesn't make that you're healthy. Having a smile of a face upon you, a veneer of a smile upon you, having to look a beautiful structure upon you, that doesn't make you to be well. You should be healed, the sickness inside first in you, then you could be good outward. And what is that sickness you have in you? Distorted thinking is your sickness. That's hypocritical mask. And every pastor teacher should face this challenge. The challenge of rightly dividing the word of truth. The challenge of getting back and teaching the word of the Lord of God in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. If he doesn't teach to you in those things, then he is also sick. If the pastor is doing his work properly, faithfully, much of the disasters that we are facing today in the world wouldn't have happened. The disaster of hungerness. The disaster of people reigning in wickedness. It includes all from A to Z. Because you have been distorting, you haven't been faithful to the word of God, and you have been wicked, you have been hypocritical, you have been canape, the one word in Hebrew. And you yourself till date are not able to get back in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and to teach the truth. Tomorrow, dear brethren, no matter what, whether they hear or forbear, your right bona fide duty is to teach them in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and you don't lower your standards of teachings. They have to come up and reach to the standards of teachings because we are not teaching to you in parables, says the word in Matthew 13. The dispensation of the church age demands that you learn the word of God like the mystery doctrine. The same thing in Second Peter, Second Timothy 4.2, when he says, Preach the word, Kairusathon Lagan, none of the author could give a great cross-reference except one Telugu reference Bible, what we have, wherewith he claims Colossians 4.2-4. Two through 4. He says, Preach the word, what? The mystery doctrine, mystery doctrine, mystery doctrine. None of the authors, even Schofield, couldn't come to write that. 
And what is the importance that we need to care to Sothan Logan about the Musterian Didache? Because that's what you have been designed. And that's the reason why the 24 elders lay down their crowns before God for making you to be in this creation. But what is happening, he says, you're having your thinking distorted. You're having your scoop, but that scoop is of violence. Do you know what is this word violence? It meant to say kamas. And the word kamas over here in the pictographical representation teaches you have already built up a wall which has been so stubborn hearted, which has been so much in the standards of having to be separated from the thinking of the holiness of God. And that wall will cause you to have blood in you. Because the thing what you have separated and kept, that becomes your blood. Because if you are living in the sphere of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, you are separated from the world and that becomes your life, that becomes your blood. Blood refers to life. And here come as, first you build up a wall and you have that in your blood and no matter whatever it is, you are going to be pierced through the thorn. And that thorn kind of pierce is what he claims. Distorted thinking. Kamas. And all the time God the Holy Ghost is piercing you to look. This is not what I wanted to teach. This is not what I wanted to be. But yet you say you already constructed a wall and you go on to teach your sherats of oratory. You already go to teach the sherats of miracles or healings or tongues. And you already claim yourselves to be prophets and apostles. And you say now the power of the Spirit in operating of all the gifts is in force. Whom you are kidding with, dear brethren, with Lord God the Holy Ghost which always pierces you to look, you are doing violence against the word of God. You haven't come back to look the word in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. You are doing violence against my Christ. You are doing violence against the great beauty of my Lord. You are doing violence to this church. And all the time you have your time to think. Never you go to meditate upon the word of God. Never you go to look upon the mind of Christ. Never you try to dig what does this word meant to say in the Hebrew or Greek or Aramaic. What does this word meant to say in the isagogical background? What does this word meant to say in the dispensations? What does this word meant to say for us in the present reality? How we have to apply it? How we have to interpret it? How we have to apply? How we have to make it to be the principle? So he claims over here, violence is scooping out from their mouth, like the waters which should come out from a cistern, that is, the waters or cistern, what we claim, followed by the word scoop, it meant to say they have in their head, they should be the scribes, they have in their head, the teaching when they have been sent from disciples, they have to grow up into grammatias, from disciples, they have to grow up into grammatias, this word, the word of Lord God always should rain in them as a fountain, comes out waters of waters. As a disciples, you have to grow up, as a grammatias, you have to grow up into the standards. From disciples, you have to train them up to become grammatias, and that should be what it should be raining in your head. But over here, you find these people, they are coming out with distorted thinking. And this distorted thinking has made a separation of wall that is there in their blood, and that's what the way how they have been pierced in their thinking and make themselves to be absolutely evil to the core. And furthermore, he says, besides violence, devastation. And the word devastation is a combination that in your thinking, you have no perception to get any thought into Christ. No matter from wherever you get your thought, either it is human viewpoint, either it is rationalism or empiricism, you live as if you don't have any purpose with God on this earth and you think your safety, your security is your money, your safety, security is the chariots of the king horses as we read in the Old Testament. That is the army. And in this COVID season we saw the things what they had as charity or security was only oxygen. <laughs> 
in the second wave. The devastation or the spoil is nothing but they have in their munching process. They have in their every perception thought to depend upon the criteria of human viewpoint to be number one. They don't go to be in the criteria of the word of God to be number one. They have all the time distorted thinking. So he says, first violence, Kamas. The second word, Shadad. And the third one, it is being heard, he says. You know, when God the Father would look upon you when you pray, he clearly understands what is your thinking. Therefore, he claims in Proverbs 28, verses 11, even the prayers of the one who don't listen or who don't transform themselves according to the word of the Lord of God, even the prayers of them, he claims it is an abhorrence. It's an abomination to the Lord. So he says now, this distortion, Kamas and, and Shaddad, which has come, he says he is being heard. And what it is that is being heard? They're munching their blood and their eyes completely face upon the process, what he calls to be as in continuity, illness and smiting. So when it is being heard continually, what you find, he says, it is sickened. The word grief and wounds, the word grief is called to be illness. And this illness is nothing but those who haven't come to their mind to be the disciples of the word of God in the church. People today don't understand the meaning of ill or sickness. Why are you sick? They say by the virtue of age. They say by the standards of these things that are happening along in the world because of these viruses which has come. No, illness is because you haven't built up a wall of separation to become disciple of the word of God. If you have not become the disciple of the word of my Lord, my rock, my God, then you are sickened. Christians today have forgot completely the theme of Acts 11 which has been recorded for us to teach. Disciples were called for the first time as Christians. And God the Father in His grace through Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in John 1-12, wherewith He gave the power to become the sons of God. He gave the power there to become exuse authority, to become the sons in the sense called to be technon believers in Christ. These are the disciples. These are the great work of the Lord. These are the great people of my Christ. So why the people are sick? Because they haven't built up their wall to become the Lama disciples of the word of God. They haven't come to become Montano plus Lidasco in Christ. They have really lost out what the word of Lord of God teaches to them. They have completely lost it out from their mind. So continually, if you are having violence, kamas, and if you are having continually among you the word called to be shadad, you will come to a state or to a position which is absolutely being heard before the presence of the Lord, before the faces of the Lord, having in their blood, having in their distorted thinking, they will have in them what you call continually to be illness. And the word illness is nothing but they have in them no wall of suppression to become the disciples of the word of God. So dear brethren, because you are sick, your economy is sick, or anything that is not oriented to the peace in your life, the failure is from the pastor teacher, those who have become canapes to the cause. So he says, sickness and you will have in you smiting. <laughs> smiting in the sense over there he gives you in this energy of this body of the flesh. 
He corrects you to give you great warning through that illness becomes scribe. The word smiting in the pictographical representation is a virality of the sperm calling you to become a scribe. First he gives you sickness so that you should wake up and come back to the reality of the word of God. And if you don't become the reality of the word of the Lord of a God, then he smites you. And he's giving you that smiting so that you could become at least now scribe in the word of God. So dear brethren, if you have pastor teachers or shepherds who are not making you to become the word of God or becoming the scribes in God, then they are canapes. So the main idea of this word canape is nothing but they stray you out or they remove you out from the right path. And today the churches are building up upon such men. They have been led by upon such men even in the committee who completely stray you out or who completely remove you out from the right path and this is what you call to be a defiled polluted and profaned hypocritical Christian. So they transgress Lord God's law and violate the statutes and break his covenant and all these things will contribute to the pollution of the land. And the same thing is been done of an evil action by these religion leaders over here in Jeremiah 2311. And Daniel predicted Antiochus Epiphanes in Daniel 1132, long before the event took place in the time of the Maccabeans. The values of godless people were completely twisted. So Antiochus Epiphanes, about that in, we read in Daniel 11.32, though the name is not been there, yet he says for us to understand, in the time of Maccabean war, he will come out, because he was a man who was been there in the same godless, twisted schemes to turn into great revolt. And Antiochus Epiphanes' story, if you would look to give a sacrifice of thousand small children, and the children were not enough in that place of Judah. And there on later on he went to give them mothers, and even the mothers couldn't meet the number of thousand. So now he goes to give pigs as a sacrifice upon the altars. And then afterwards the four Maccabean brothers, they fight. Of freedom from 167 to 165 BC. And that's what they have, the feast called as Hanukkah. So the point over here, why it is called to be distorted, that which should be given as a sacrifice to the altar of the Lord of a God, now Antiochus Epiphanes in his evil nature goes to give that which is not accord with the word. So that's called distorted, that's called canapes, that's what today it is happening today in our pulpit. That's why we have this illustration over here recorded by Sparazodiotus. It gives you this reason, the same thing which is not correct. Even now today we have to come up, the idea from where we have been strayed away from the right path or making to be disciples of the word of the Lord of our God is been reigning and dancing in our pulpits today to the core without having proper fear of the word of the Lord of our God because the churches today don't learn sound Bible doctrine. And they don't have proper preaching, they don't have proper teaching, they don't have proper mentoring of the word of God. And a church where there is no sound Bible doctrine, that church could be compared to the way of the synagogue of Satan, to the way of the synagogue where Satan has kept its throne, established its throne, and now it has been copulating with the so-called religion leaders in the pulpits to produce false doctrines, false teachings, and to produce false children out who are further going on to spread like canapes to the core. If the prophet would have done his work faithfully, he would have given that seed from the fruit so that he could continue that work to the next generation. If the priest would have that great vigor and valor in him, which is nothing but to make disciples, which is nothing but to make them to grow up into grammatias in his vigor and valor of his life, we wouldn't find such kind of a problem in our pulpits. Therefore he says over here again, what is a priest? 
The priest is the one who has been given this authority in making grown-up grammatias from disciples. And if the priest, if he would have done faithfully his work, he wouldn't have been found as the way it has been reprimanded in Jeremiah 23, 11, that he is a hypocritical one. The priest is nothing but who has in his vitality a vigor and valor in his life only to make scribes. The same thing we read, go in Ezekiel 3.11. The point over there is that the word halak, you take the Lamath people to become the grammatias, that's the word halak. If not, you haven't been sent by the Lord. You may be thinking 101 reasons that you are being gifted, you are this, you are that. If you don't make grammatias or you don't make disciples to go up into grammatias, you haven't been sent by the Lord. Take it granted, dear brethren. The people who are listening to you not to carry their cross every day and follow you, they may be happy. They may be happy because they have been strayed away from the right path. Right path is a straight road where with it's very rare the people can walk, he claims, in look. The passage over there for us in chapter 13, straightened gate. Because people should be made known what is this narrow road or a straightened gate and the broad road. Straying away from the right path is always called for them to walk in the standards that makes them to be happy. But here the word of the Lord of God says the straight road or the straight path is nothing but the straight gate. In Luke chapter 13 verses 22 he says, And he went through the cities and villages teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate, for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in, and shall not be able. What is the word strive? The song code number given over here is 75 in the New Testament. It is only two-digit number, 75. And the word over here for us, it meant to say to strive in the straight gate is nothing but for you all to understand the importance of great care and great burden so that you shall not be distorted. So the word meant to say agnozomai and A-G-O-N-I-Z-O-M-O-I -O -O meant to say you are fighting for victory. And that's what it meant to say to fight, to wrestle. It takes really great challenge to fight. Every day coming to Christ, every day carrying your cross and following the Lord of a God is called to be agnozomai. So he goes on to teach to you the task of faith in preserving and the task of fighting as in the public games. And it meant to say to take pain, to wrestle, to prize for the contest. Therefore he claims in Philippians 3, looking upon forward to Christ, forgetting those things which are behind, I go forward for the Lord's battle. That's what he says over there. The same thing, making every effort to achieve that goal. And it implies hindrances in the development of the Christian life. But you are not worried what is Christian life, far less you could develop in it, far less you could sit and analyze your hindrances in it. So he says over here in, Phil in Revolution chapter 3 about the church of Philadelphia, the one who is holy, the one who is true, the one who has the key of David. And he says, what he has opened, no man can shut. And what he has shut, no man can open. And he says, I know your ergos, that is your works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it. For thou has a little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name. You know, not denying my name. That's what today people are doing. They have been out from the right path of the word of the Lord of a God and they have completely denied the mind of Christ. And that's what today, dear brethren, the word deny meant to say, ah, me, oh, my. And ah, arni, oh, my, it meant to say to refuse. And the meaning to refuse anyone so that not to know or recognize him. Do you think Christ is in you? If the world wants to know about Christ, can they look in you? But you are denying him in such a way that he shall not be recognized. 
so that you are rejecting him in the face of former relationship or not having better relationship or better knowledge. Can you say you can know my Christ or know my? You know him better. Then you have to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. You have to learn the mind of Christ. You have to get back to the things what the word of Lord God has been demanding you. So he says that the one who rejects or who has an idea of contradiction so that they do not have a better knowledge about my God and former a better relationship with my God. So, but here he says, you haven't denied my name. And then he says, behold, I will make them to be the synagogue of Satan. That is like the way the hypocritical crowds they are today in our pulpits. So that they are say they are Jews and they, they are not, but they lie. So I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. I have given you this great love so that you could be loyal and faithful to me in the word of God. Because you have kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And furthermore, behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which you have, that no man take away thy crown. And then he who been found victor, Nike, he says that he that overcometh will I make him to be a pillar or the temple of my God. The word overcometh is Nika, meant to say Nike, victory. And then he goes on to say that he shall go no more out and I will write upon him the name. That is what he shall not be taken out from my presence. He will be always with me because he was been faithful in the little strength on this earth when there were no faithful witnesses for him on this earth. So there is no wise you will be taken out your name from my God and from the city of my God, which is a new Jerusalem, which cometh down out from the heaven from my God. And I will write upon him a new name again, a new kind of name. So he claims to walk in the straight gate. <laughs> Dear brethren, Luke chapter 13. So he says, the people who would strive, but you don't have the battle to strive because already your flesh is striving against Lord God the Holy Ghost by grieving, squelching, waxing and lying unto it. So I think you don't have any other greater battle than that. Because your flesh is always striving or fighting against the spirit. Because you always have to have the things pertaining to this world. The lust of flesh, the lust of eye and the pride of life. If you are not, you would strive for growing up in Christian knowledge. Knowing up the hindrances that are coming for your Christian life. So he says... When once the master of the house is risen up and has shut the door, he began to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know not from where you are. Then he shall begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in the presence, and you have taught us in our streets. You know, the word of Lord God is so specific. The church is a place where there is a knowledge of Bible doctrine to be thought of. But this church has now become a place where he calls it is to be a street. And today churches have become streets where prostitutes work. And we are finding today religion prostitutes in their heads who haven't been given the bona fide gift. But rather they have become canapes completely and absolutely profaning men in the midst of us. They don't teach to you the right word of God. They completely drive you out. They completely remove you out from the straight word of God. And then, but he shall say, I tell you, I know not you. You depart from me because you are workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you shall see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out and you shall come from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. That is an open option for anyone to whom to sit on the sons of Zebedee, the way how she claimed, who shall sit to the right or left. He said, it is not in my hand, but to the one God, the father who has designed and they will be the people either from the east, west, north or south. And behold, they that are last will be the first and they that are first will be the last. But the, but the point in 24th verse he claims over here in Luke 13, I say unto you, e will, you will seek to enter in and you shall not be able. 
And the reason why we say this, dear brethren, as well looking upon the present Christendom, is because many pastors have failed to make it to become amemptas, unblameable, inward and outward, in the sphere of holiness, in truth, before God. So that Father, even Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, at the coming of Him, with all of His saints, He shall glorify looking upon you. But rather you have been found in the midst of such crooked, perverse generations of the people who are standing and teaching you in your pulpits, not able to give you the right mind of Christ. And that's your fate. And dear brethren, much of the people in the present Christendom are not even worthy enough to look. That you are holy. Though you have been purchased by the precious blood of Christ, they look upon your faces you don't consider to be holy. Always having mischiefs, always having in your mind to say something to get from the Lord because he has called you for this work. So you say weekly once I come and bribe the Lord, monthly once I come and give him some greater bribe called to be tied. Don't deceive yourselves, dear brethren. Life is too short, yet the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders in this particular church age is too large. Dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. So with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order will tell to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is so very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to caruso, thorn, lagan. Herald the word in season, not of season, because the diamonds from my witnesses, wherewith you have been called. The number one diamonds from my witnesses in well infinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamonds from my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, dear brethren, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is, O oh Lord, to have fellowship through the word. Father, the way how they have become to profane thy name under the target called as canapes. Lord, help us not to be in that realm through the little strength thou have given unto us in this church age, which is of a great vast energy, which can trample Satan under our feet, and which can put to death the lusts of the old sin nature, and to live in God, in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Through that power, Father, greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. To this extent, Lord, we pray that rightly dividing the word of God and being witnessing for the truth is our life, so continually establish us to stand in the spirit of holiness in the real of truth. To this extent, Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Sovereign Lord. Amen.